Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember the times we lived without the internet? You came home and you were sitting comfortably in your chair. You were reading the newspaper or watching the news on TV. Doesn't matter. You trusted that source of information. It was a one-way source of information, but you trusted it. You liked it. It was your favorite one. But you could not interact it. And you would have never imagined that maybe one day you will be able to write an article of your own let alone publish it. You would say, that's not something I do, that's something a journalist does, or something a publisher does, but not me. And then, all of a sudden, internet came along. And it was possible for anyone to spread any type of information to anyone else. In a split of a second, the information transited from one place to the globe to another one, just like that. This is what we call the decentralization of information. And we see today that what internet does to information, Bitcoin does to payments. In other words, if today you do no longer need internet to have information, tomorrow you will no longer need a bank to make your payments. But before that, let us have a look on how the current financial system works. Let's say that you buy a book on Amazon, or let's say on eBay maybe. You buy a book on eBay, and what happens is the following. You're a good payer, so you pay immediately through PayPal. So you ask PayPal to pay the seller of the book. Then PayPal charges your Visa card, which charges your bank account. And before it gets to the bank account of the seller, there are still a couple of intermediaries involved there. And all of these intermediaries, there are a lot, in this case there are maybe five, they all take a transaction fee. Because they all want to have a part of the pie. And who is paying? Well, you are paying. And the seller is paying a little fee as well. Everybody is paying all these intermediaries. But in the real world, if you make a cash transaction from one person to another, you don't need an intermediary. You just give some money and you get some goods and the transaction is settled. There is no intermediary involved, there is no fee taken. Wouldn't it be amazing if on the internet we could have a system that is exactly like that, where you don't have an intermediary that always has to check the money and then transfer it to someone else? Well, that's what Bitcoin makes possible. And Bitcoin is only one application. Bitcoin is actually based on the technology that is blockchain. For those who don't know blockchain, look at it this way. Blockchain is the iPhone, and Bitcoin is only one application that sits on the iPhone. So to understand the full potential of blockchain, I want you to first understand blockchain. And therefore, I brought with me a couple of little blocks. This is a block of the blockchain. It contains information. Transactions could be other types of information as well. And it is created on the network. And then, a couple of minutes later, someone in the network, doesn't matter who now, can create a second block. Uh, this second block says, hey, I'm block number two, and I'm going to link myself on top of block number one. So the, num the block number two links himself to block number one. And then a couple of minutes later, a third block comes along and says, hey, I'm block number three, and I'm going to link myself to block number two. So we do have here a sequential order of blocks, block number one, block number two, and block number three. Each of these blocks, they refer to the previous one. Block number three says, I'm linked to block number two. And block number two says, I'm linked to block number one. So we have a chain of blocks. And there you go, blockchain. It is just that simple. Now, I also mentioned that this blockchain contains information. In this way, you can look at the blockchain as a database. Now, if you want to have a look on what databases are today, we can see that databases are very centralized. So you usually have one central database that keeps track of all the information. And then everybody else connects directly to that central source of information. And of course, as this central source of information is very important, we put a lot of security around. We invest a lot of money into making firewalls and other security checks to make sure that the information there is kept, is kept safe. Now, what happens if this central database gets corrupted or is no longer uh, valid. Well, in the best cases you have backup, but if someone corrupts the database, the information in there is just wrong. So, I mentioned that blockchain or Bitcoin was decentralized. So how does that work in the blockchain work? So you have your blockchain here, but actually you don't, ha don't have only one blockchain, you have multiple blockchains that sit on every node of the network. 
and those blockchains are exact duplicates. Now, what is a node of the network? A node of the network, it's you, it's me, it's everybody who has a computer. Everybody who has a computer can be part of the network. I have personally a blockchain network on my computer. And it's an exact duplicate from all the other blockchain networks in blockchains in the network. Now, we have a chain of blocks, it's decentralized, there are duplicates everywhere over the world, tens, hundreds, thousands of duplicates all over the world. So if one of them falls away, there is no problem. Everybody else can create a, a duplicate again for him. So, and then there's a magic trick. And I'm now going to show you the first magic trick of blockchain. Let's say you wrote an amazing article and you're ready to publish it in a scientific review, but first you want to have a peer review from one of your colleagues. Now, before sending the article to your colleague, you decide to store the article in block number two here. And we'll come back to that later. So you share the article to your colleague and he reviews it and he says, oh my God, this is a really good article. I think it's going to win a Nobel Prize. And your colleague, he says, but maybe it would be great if instead of my colleague's name, it's my name that's below, below it. So I will change the name and then I will send it to a publisher so that maybe I get the Nobel Prize. So your colleague, what he will have to do in this case, he will have to delete the proof that you own this article before him. So what he will have to do, he will have to get, away, get rid of block number two. And you can see here in this blockchain world that this blockchain from your colleague is different from all the other blockchains. And block number two links to block number one. That's not a valid rule in the blockchain world. And everybody in the network will start to see that this blockchain is corrupted and it's not valid. So it will be rejected of the network. So the only way your colleague has to stay in the network is to accept the truth and that you wrote the article and not him. So this is very important and it's very useful uh, compared to current databases. A simple example, if, if you have an administration that keeps track of who owns which piece of land, but some case, someone in the administration decides that he's going to allocate some pieces of land to himself instead of to the actual owner, it's easy for him to do so. And this case has actually happened in some countries, namely Honduras. Now, in a blockchain world, this is not possible because you can't take the information away. So what do we have here? We have a chain of blocks that is decentralized and you can't take a block away. This is the magic of blockchain.